good? All right, thank you all for being here. Um, I think we're close to being on time, so hopefully that worked for everybody. Um, two weeks from today, you know, we'll be sitting here post-game, and uh, truthfully, after today, I'm glad we got it. <laughs> we uh, we went over a little over 100 plays. Um, we hit all four core special teams, had a Big 12 officiating crew, a lot of really good video um, situations. We worked goal line. We worked uh, a backed-up situation. Did an opening drive of each half. Um, the uh, worked got some good red zone stuff in. Did a third and fourth down period. So a lot, a lot of, a lot of good work. Um, wasn't real fired up about some of it. I thought some individuals really showed up, and I thought there were some disappointing things in it as well. Um, and really, the last three practices, we'd kind of been trending upward, and and just not at our best today. And I, I can make excuses for them, but I'm not. You know, it is practice 14. It we have been pretty physical. It was a little warm. I can, like I said, I can make a bunch of them, but we have to be better than we were today. Uh, it wasn't awful, but you know the expectations are high, and it's a daily, it's a daily standard, and and we fell short. Not everybody, but we fell short in a few in a few areas today. I'll talk about each phase quickly, and then y'all can ask questions. Um, so our special teams, like kickoff, Michael Hayes hit the ball really well, uh, which is encouraging. Starting to get strength he's getting stronger we had a couple of quality reps covering kicks which y'all have heard me talk about that that's going to be important to us uh kickoff return you know Hudson Clement is is really uh competing and he's probably right now if we played today he'd be our kickoff returner he's really trending in the right way uh he hit a big one today on a in a kickoff return drill so that was exciting to see you know punting the ball we just need to be more consistent um and, that, and that's really our whole punt team uh, and then punt block, we did some nice things. You know, I think that uh, Preston continues to do um, really well returning. I think he, he's he got a chance to be an all-conference player in that role. Um, and then defensively, we started off very good. I thought we fell off as the scrimmage went. Some guys got tired. We, we, we played some of those guys a bunch of snaps because we wanted to. You know, I think it's really, really important for us, um, especially at the safety position, to find out, like, who are the guys are going to uh, – to, to kind of step up there. Uh, we need to play cleaner. You know, we, we missed some tackles in space, and that's a combination. we got some good offense skill guys, but also we're not using great uh, technique. I thought our D-line was effective today. Um, I thought we did a good job using our hands, um, created some TFLs. Um, offensively, got a slow, off to a slow start, picked it up later, uh, some explosive plays. Again, not clean enough. You know, I thought that uh, run game got going during the second part. Um, but just not clean enough for a veteran group. We're, you know, we got a bunch of guys played a bunch of football. Um, we held Garrett after two series. He played two series, and Nico came in, got a lot of quality reps with the ones, um, which we wanted to do. So that was that was a, that was good. Um, and and I'll hit on Preston Fox offensively. I thought he did he had a really nice day. Um, he made a couple really big plays, and um, he's probably been as consistent as anybody we have offensively, just day in and day out, showing up, doing the work, being productive. So um, with that, I'll take. Questions, Greg. So at this point, obviously, still time to go. But how close do you think you are to your two deep point? Do you start really yeah. narrowing it down after today, or how's yeah, that it'll start. It'll start narrowing down. You know, and like these scrimmages expose for the good and for the bad. You know, it either shows you're ready or it shows you're not ready. And so, you know, I'll spend a good chunk of this afternoon watching the film, and and we're going to evaluate it from a personnel standpoint, probably harder than we will from a schematic standpoint. Um, but yeah, I think it'll start clearing up. What our plan is is Monday and Tuesday we'll we'll treat like a Tuesday, Wednesday in, in season practice, um, and do some really good on good work, but also um, start some a little bit of Penn State prep, and then we'll go Monday and Tuesday with that. Wednesday we'll have our mock game, you know, and by and we'll 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 do some team segments with some of our developmental guys on Wednesday. But this is the last time we really go live until we play. Safety is still an area that you've yeah, got to make yeah. some decisions. And where's Anthony Wilson in terms of that? Yeah, he's uh, he's out there. We limited him today, too. I mean, he'll be he'll be ready to go for, for the Penn State game. Uh, KK continues to make a move. Jaheim Joseph made some really nice plays today. Uh, we want him to be more consistent. Um, but those guys, you know, Aiden Nelson's had a lot of opportunities. Um, I can speak probably better on those early next week after I watch the tape and have a chance to, to evaluate it. 
Yeah, it seems like a lot of different ways that you can evaluate film. You mentioned by personnel, by schematics, mm -hmm. what you're trying to run, who you have on the field. What do you do to keep from bog getting bogged down in all of those things and making the decisions that you're going to make over the next week? And is there you know, one or two areas that takes precedence, hey, this guy did this, we got to get him out there kind of thing? Yeah, so at this point, the schematics aren't as important because we're not necessarily scheming on either side to win in the scrimmages. It's about figuring out what we can do and – and going out and executing that. It's really from a schematic standpoint, after today, it's about narrowing our package down. Because y'all have heard me say is fall camp is about for the whole season, all 12 games. we got to get our guys ready for all 12 games. And so you do a lot that maybe you're not going to use until weeks seven or eight, but you introduce it in the spring, you introduce it in fall camp, so the guys are familiar with it and they're not getting their first reps on Monday of a game week. Um, and so you install everything you have in all three areas, and then once you get into your, your game prep mode, you narrow everything down, and you really concentrate on getting repetitions versus different looks with those plays you're going to run or those uh, those calls you're going to have on defense. So that's kind of – today is all about personnel. You know, there's a couple things defensively and offensively that we did from a scheme just to see what it looks like full speed. But it's going to be about evaluating personnel and can a guy make a competitive play in a, in a scrimmage in a live game scenario. Today, did you use helmet communication? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've the done tablets we, and all that stuff. Yeah, we did. We had some issues with the tablets, but like, um, it, it's going to be a learning. We used the helmet communication. We had some little bit of issues with that. Um, it's it's, it's going to be, it's no different. I was talking to the officials. Um, it's no different than any technology. When it works, it is great. But when it doesn't, it it's a pain. You know, like I've got a deal at my house that controls the TV and the sound and it's great till the power gets off and then you got to reset it. And, and I'm illiterate with my hands. So I have to call somebody to help me fix it. So it's kind of like that for, for the technology too. It's great until you have some issues with it. Who receives the signals on defense? Obviously quarterback on offense. Who's yeah, it's up green in the doctor or whatever. Yeah, it's kind of to be determined. And there's really some gamemanship in that also, Greg. So I probably won't say it publicly, but there's, but there is some gamemanship defensively just, how you're going to do it. Things you weren't happy with, execution, was it missed assignments? What were the things? Well, like? you know, it, what it is, I sit back there and watched it today, most of it. I caught a little bit of it on offense, but mostly I sat back there and watched it. So um, some of it you got to be quick to is, and so it's, listen, I'm tired too. So, like, I'm on a little bit of a short fuse myself, all right, in full transparency. So, like, is some of the stuff I'm getting pissed off about is that people that aren't going to play? Or is that people that are going to play? And so, like, I got to go back and sit in my office and watch it from a 30,000-foot view and, and and really make some notes on who really did well today and who who didn't. And if we still think they're – if we still think they can be a player for us, then we got to give them more opportunities. Did you like the energy? <laughs> yeah, I thought defensively we had great energy at the start. Yeah, we had great energy at the start. I thought we, uh, we flew around. Um, we our energy level dropped once we we struggled in one segment of the practice defensively. I thought our energy level dropped, um, but it was. Uh, um, but I didn't have I didn't have a necessarily a problem. You know, offensively, I think there's a fine line there, right? You gotta you don't play the game with as much emotion offensively, um, but I didn't think they weren't ready to go. Like we just had some execution stuff. With the four-game redshirt, well, you don't have to necessarily declare mm -hmm. somebody right now, but do you think you have a beat on what true freshmen will definitely yeah. play a lot? Well, we're going to do some special teams work Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and, and that'll probably clear continue to clear it up. You know, the way we're going to go, if they can help us right now, we're going to play them. You know, and then if they show in a game scenario that they're not capable, then we still got those four games. But we're going to we're going to approach it. If they can help us, we're going to use them. Do you have an idea of who can do that now? Anybody uh, want to? Yeah, let's do it after I watch, Greg. I'll, I'll okay. give you a pretty good rundown after I watch it. I'll be able to, you know, who uh, who I think is going to play. Fair. Neil, with the tablets, have you heard from guys maybe the next level that it, is it a different approach to using that and looking at that film in a game versus maybe when you've got extra time here in the facility? Is there any difference to that at all? Yeah, it's really not about that. It's it's not about the next level. It's about asking the high school coaches. You know, the high school coaches are the ones that have had it. You know, you've probably been to, seen some, some high school games where they have the TVs on the on the sideline 
where you can go over and you can watch it because the NFL just has still shots. You know, they have the tablets, but they don't have the video. They just got still shots. And so you're trial and error on your own. Now, we got to use them in the bowl game, but we didn't see them until we were on the bowl site. So it's not like we um, had a lot of planning for it. And so it's really the conversations where I've asked kind of, hey, how do y'all do this? What are you doing? It's been with the uh, the people in the UFL because they've had the video. So anybody that's that's coached in the UFL and then anybody at the high school level that's been using um, – there's three or four different uh, software companies that do it in high school. Josiah mentioned that he had used that, something like that in high school. Anybody else on the team that you know got to use that technology? Yeah, we've got a bunch. Yeah, if you look at it, it's it's kind of over the last five years, a ton of high school co- or a ton of high school programs are using it. Like, um, I could there. I mean, there's several in West Virginia that are using it. Um, there's a lot of big school. I mean, it's it's been pretty readily available. You know, going back probably as early as maybe 14, 15. You know where where high schools have been been able to use that technology. Neil, last year Devin Carter kind of saw an increase in production when he got moved to the slot. Mm-hmm. Do you view that position differently this year because of that? You know, I think that we've had guys that you know. I think each offensive unit's different. I think each um, whether it's quarterback or how you're going to attack people is different year to year. Um, and and Devin was dealing with some some lower body stuff where it was affecting his ability to really stretch the field and he wasn't practicing as much. So we were able to incorporate him in the slot because it got him some better matchups and helped him until he got healthy. He played more outside later in the year, but um, yeah, so I think it's to be determined. I I think the the group of receivers we have, we can move them around all everybody, but the new guys, you know, know all the positions because we, we trained them in the spring that way in the winter. And so the, the new guys, they don't, um, but we've got a lot of flexibility there where a lot of different guys can play. You know, you only played Garrett, I guess, two series. That, does that just mean he's, he's ready to go? Well, he better be, right? <laughs> no, I mean, he's played a lot of football. I mean, I mean that kind of kiddingly. But, um, yeah, I feel I, – I have a really good idea what, what he is. You know, we didn't play wide as much. Um, you know, I think Aubrey played 25, 30 snaps. Um, there's different people that um, – but – we, uh, you know, I just think it's Nico. Nico got a lot of quality reps with the ones, and he's much improved. Um, I think you all saw that in the spring. You've seen that when you've been out there, um, and and, uh, and I was I was glad he got some reps. Health wise, overall. Yeah, I think yeah, I think we're going to be fine. You know, you always get some bumps and bruises when you when you when you go live. So we'll have a few. Um, like I said, I have a better understanding on that on Monday probably too. You talked earlier about I'm um, getting some clarity at some of these threes, like mm-hmm. running back, tight end. So those, any of that coming to focus a little bit, or you still need time? Yeah, was, you and I were talking about third running back. I thought Dunbar and Hubbard did some good things today. Jalen Anderson had a really nice touchdown run where he broke some tackles. Um, they got the three of those guys got the majority of the carries today. Um, Jaheim and CJ they got some, but those three got the majority. Um, so it'll be interesting to when when you watch the film. I think Jack Samarco really has made a move uh, as a freshman. He was here in the spring. He's done a great job blocking. You know, he had a big uh, pass reception today too. So, um, you know, he's a guy that's for sure making a move. What do you think of the young quarterbacks that just got here? Yeah, uh, Khalil was. He struggled in his first series today, and then he came back. He got he got two more series at the end of the scrimmage. Um, he's talented. It's going to take him a little bit of time. We're going to have to have some patience. Um, but he can really run. He's athletic. He's got a quick release. Um, he's got a strong arm. Um, it's a lot. The The schematics are a lot right now. Um, and it's a lot for Ryder, too. But Ryder went, has been through a college season, so he has a little better idea how to prepare. Um, but skill set-wise, I'm, I'm really excited for Khalil. Now, it's probably going to be in the spring and, and next fall camp. Um but skill wise, like I'm excited about him. Ryder is Ryder had a great day on Tuesday and Wednesday. Yesterday and today, not as good. Um, but for being the third quarterback right now, like um I was I was talking to some 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 people yesterday and I said this, like he can go out and if Nico plays, Nico we can go 
do what Nico does best, which is we can call some run plays for him. We can move him out of the pocket because Ryder can come in and, and he can run our offense. But a guy like Zay Jennings, where's he at in your own mind? How's he coming along? He's just got to be consistent. And that's a word I use a lot. But consistency to me is about you form trust. So, like, consistently doing the right things. Consistently, you know, for right now, like, the one thing that I love about Zay, man, he has courage. And you don't have to talk to him about pulling his pin. You don't have to talk to him about, um, like, he's really aggressive. Um, but he also does some things because his eyes are undisciplined. You know, so, like, I love his energy. I love his effort. I love his physicality, but his attention to detail and just his consistency play to play has got to be better. Neil, the old days this coming week was confusing because kids are, were moving in dorms, mm. classes starting. It's not quite the same anymore. Nah, is they're, it still? Uh, they go to school all year. Yeah. You know, like this is a nervous weekend for a head football coach just because everybody's back. I mean, that, that hasn't changed. But they go to school year-round. They're here most of the time. You know, so it's not – um, our freshmen have been in the dorms since um, late, or Memorial Day weekend. So there's not as much of a transition as there used to be. I kind of miss that, really, the big start of school. Like, I do like when the kid, other than the traffic, like you can feel the energy when the student body comes back to campus. So that, that is a fun time. Dak's ready, too. He starts Monday, He starts right? Monday, man. He's ready. He's sitting on go, you know. He's sitting on go. All right. I appreciate y'all. Thank you all.